Passion is super simple. This is how we define it in the literature. It's an intense desire or enthusiasm for something. That can be love, and yes, that can be war. It can be stalking, and it can be nurturing. But we're finding in the literature is that that divide is really clear. So Bob Ballarand at the University of Montreal has defined passion in two different ways. He's looked at Olympic level athletes, he's looked at lawyers and doctors, he's looked at kids who play piano, he's looked at judges, he's looked at people who do everyday work across the spectrum. And he's found there are really two ways to define it. One is harmonious. And as we'll talk about in a second, harmonious passion, as it sounds like, kind of works in tandem, works in harmony with the rest of your life. But the other one is obsessive passion. And obsessive passion is that path towards real unhappiness. So I want you to think of something that you have an intense desire or enthusiasm for. It can be anything. It can be work. It doesn't have to be work. In fact, when we looked at different kinds of passion in the research, we find over 190 passions. It can be email marketing. It can be cooking. It can be spending time with your family. It can be reading. It can be cycling. It can be anything across the board, anything that you have an intense desire for. And let's walk through what harmonious and what obsessive passion looks like and see how you might feel about one or the other for yourself. Now, the basis of harmonious passion, the very basis of it all is simple. You do it because you love it. Now, how many people in here have kids? Quick show of hands. Great. All right. So if you have kids, you'll totally get this. And if you don't, you've been one, so you'll totally get it too. Um, Let's think about five-year-olds. Five-year-olds are awesome and they're super simple. And we know five-year-olds because when they get up in the morning, they're like, boop, time to play with Legos. Like, they don't think about it. Like, boop, time to go outside and play kickball. Boop, I'm going to go, I'm going to pick up a book and read. Boop, got to find my friend. Boop, whatever it might be. They're like, I'm going to wake up and do something that's awesome. Right? And that's fantastic. Now, it's different when you get to obsessive passion. Because now we're talking about people who do things for status or glory or money or for other people. And I'm not saying that five-year-olds who are obsessive sit up and they're like, boop, got to think about my future and how I'm actually going to pay for college in 12 years and what am I going to do with my life. We are talking about the kid who's playing outside who hears, hey, it's time to come in. You got to practice piano. And they're like, oh, I got to go practice piano. My mom wants me to go practice piano. How many people here uh, played musical instruments growing up? Quick show of hands. Can you raise them really high? All right, good. Raise them even higher. If you're still playing that instrument, can you keep it up? All right, so like 6% of you, right? So this is it. Most of us started playing something because our parents were like, you have to play this, right? We do it for someone else. And then we sit there watching the clock being like, five more minutes, which is not so different than people who are at work being like, I have five more minutes at work at their keyboard. And that's what happens as we push our passions towards the future. I have a bunch of friends who work for um, the same financial institution in New York. It's a really well-known um, financial uh, institution. It will just, um, we won't name it. We'll just say it's well-known and uh, it rhymes with old man snacks. <laughs> and... <laughs> For my friends, you know, most of them, they don't love what they do. They don't love going into work every day. They do really well financially. That business card is like super prestigious. They're really popular at dinner parties. But for the day-to-day -day stuff, and by the way, they have great vacations. From what I hear, I can't afford to join them, but um, I hear they're amazing, right? But what they do, actually do the day-to-day, -day, they don't necessarily enjoy. Except for my one friend who has the amazing name of Dan. And Dan uh, has been working at Old Man for the last uh, 17 years. And I asked him, like, what is it? Why do you love your work so much? He's like, dude, I'm a math geek. I went to MIT. Like, they give me the most challenging mathematical problems they can find, and I get to go to work every day and, like, solve puzzles. I have a great time. So the fact that he loves what he does is really key to harmonious passion. We'll find in a moment you don't have to love your work in order to enjoy harmonious passion, but we'll get there in a second. The next part of harmonious passion is that it's just a part of your life versus it being your whole life. Now, what's that mean? I work with a bunch of pianists at places like Juilliard, Metropolitan Opera, singers, and you know from the pianists especially because they will practice for seven, eight hours a day. After two, three hours, you get some of these pianists and they'll like walk over to a neighboring studio. Hey, I'm gonna go out and get a slice. That's what we do in New York, we get slices. We're gonna go out and slice, you wanna, you wanna come out? Now, if that other pianist is harmonious with their passion, they're like, yeah, I've been at it for a while. Let's go. Let's do it. And they go off. They don't think about piano. They enjoy their pizza and each other's friendship. They come back. They keep practicing. But the other type, hey, we're going to go out and get a slice. You want to come? I can't come. I got to keep working. Oh, okay. All right. Next day, we're going to go out. We've been at it for, no, I can't. I can't. I got a big competition this weekend. I can't. I can't. Okay. Next day. Hey, do you want to come? No, I can't. And the knocks, they kind of slow down and they stop coming. Right. 
Now, if you're not a pianist, and I imagine most of you here are not pianists, you might recognize this in the office. I can't leave, I can't go, I can't go out and meet Thumber Coffee, I can't go out and have lunch with anybody, I gotta stay late, I gotta keep doing this, I can't put it down. If the pie chart of your life is one color and one color only, that's a clue that you're talking about obsessive passion. Harmonious passion makes time for other things in their lives. Finally, when it comes to passion, we do it for the nature of what it is itself. Even if it's hard work, we enjoy it. So my pianists who are not, they don't win a competition, they come in second or third or fourth, they're like, you know what? I worked my butt off for that. I did really well. Let me get back to it, let me keep working at it. I'm just lucky I get to play piano. Well, the other folks, the obsessives, they come in second, third or fourth and literally they will say, I don't even know why I do this, I should just quit. Because they're doing it only for the win. Now clearly with the office it translates only for the sale. You're not enjoying your colleagues. You're not enjoying the nature of what you do. You're not enjoying what is actually occurring because of the work you're doing. It simply must make those numbers, must make that sale, that's it.